We all know that the new Swerve nuclear engine is immensely capable and is completely overshadowing the old nerf of KSP-1. So, does that mean that there is no more place for smaller and sleeker chemical SSTOs of the past? No. Even though chemical SSTOs can compete with nuclear ones by the numbers, I still think there is a place for them in KSP-2. But how should I prove it? Well, what better way to do so than to send a pure rapier craft to the SSTO mecha, Lave. And to really show what the rapier is capable of, I decided to limit myself to only one engine, and no staging of any kind. Would that even be possible? Yeah. Despite what it may seem, uh, getting an SSTO from Carbon to Lave doesn't require that much Delta V. If we were to do a direct intercept, we would need about 2100 meters a second of delta V. However, if we perform a gravity assist around Duna and use this gravity to slingshot us to live, that delta V requirement goes down to only 1200. So it's manageable, right? And yeah, it is. In fact, my SSTO from the tutorial video can easily get the delta V required with just a couple of light modifications. But that's kind of anticlimactic, just about any craft can make it just about anywhere with enough gravity assists. What if a single rapier SSTO could make it all the way to life by direct intercept? No, that would be a real challenge. So I got to work and started experimenting with a couple of different designs. Now, despite all of my SSTO experience, I've actually never really done a single engine SSTO. But after some testing, I settled on this design as it seemed to be the most promising. After many tests and small refinements, along with some frustration from the landing gear, my delta view was slowly climbing and this was actually starting to look promising. Now you see guys, up until this point I honestly didn't know if this was even possible. However, seeing my delta view slowly climb with every flight, I was starting to believe it was. And after a couple more iterations, I finally had enough LKO Delta V to successfully complete my mission, and to finally show you guys that small SSTOs are not dead after all. However, we weren't quite out of the woods just yet. The first obstacle in our way was the MUN. Originally, I wanted to split the burn up into several small ones to be as efficient as possible. However, during our dual transfer window, the MUN was right in front of our flight path. If I tried to split the burns up, I risked getting a MUN gravity assist, which is against the rules. And if I waited for the MUN to move out of the way, the optimal dual transfer window would have been gone. Well, I got about 100 meters a second of spare delta V, as long as we perform an efficient mid-course correction burn, we're going to be okay, I thought to myself. So I plotted a direct course for Jewel, fired up the rapier, and everything seemed to be going well. The mid-course correction burn went well, I got a 35km lave intercept, which is perfect. But we weren't out of the woods just yet. You see guys, even though we can see our trajectory lines past celestial objects, they're not always correct. Sometimes your trajectory will change wildly after switching to a different planet's gravity well, and we only had about 60 meters a second of delta V left. But as long as we didn't get the bug, we'd land on life with delta V to spare. Our live intercept was gone, and we had barely any delta V left to correct. The closer we got to Jewel, the more expensive our correction burn would be, and to add insult to injury, you can't actually plot maneuvers when the game is paused. I had to plot a maneuver fast. So I plotted a hasty maneuver, executed the burn, and with about 30 meters of delta V remaining, we once again had our live intercept. Thankfully we didn't encounter any more bugs when switching to Lave's gravity well, and now it was time to land. Thankfully KSP-2 doesn't have re-entry heating yet, so our suicidal trajectory into Lave's atmosphere was not an issue. 
and after performing our neck breaking arrow break maneuver and finding a suitable landing spot, we were finally able to get our Kerbal safely to the surface of Lave on just one rapier. This is the story of how I got a single rapier SSTO all the way to live. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm Kermit Von Brown and I'll see you in the next one.